we are live and we all have amazing microphones that's super great <laughs> you know martin one of the things that i miss is the announcement in french that we're starting that's right when was that it was at the very beginning of e-commerce and the cover right we had a little sentence in french saying it was starting i don't remember yeah. i don't think you remember it because your french is not so good but we used to have this <laughs> announcement in french i think from now on we should do it in german i mean just to make anton happy we can <laughs> we can <laughs> so martin who do we have joining us today we have anton from space goats i'm really curious about what they're doing and, and eager to learn more you know what i'm not going to do Tell me. I'm not going to ask Anton why the company is called Space Goats. I'm just not going to yeah. do it. There's no way. <laughs> then you will I'm not sure get an answer. <laughs> 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 Anton, thanks for doing this. Well, can you give us a little bit of your background? Like, where, where yeah, are sure. you? Where are you from? Yeah. So, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm very excited about <laughs> this. So, my name is Anton Hermann. I'm um, one of the founder of uh, Space Goats. But before my Space Goats life, I was actually a mechanical engineer. Uh, at least I was studying mechanical engineering, working as a mechanical engineer for Bosch. And now you know where I come from. I come from Stuttgart, <laughs> or I'm, I live in Stuttgart. <laughs> and here is basically the headquarters of uh, the, the brain of the German mechanical engineering industry. And yes. um, during during my, my, my job and during my studies, I already started selling on Amazon, my own products, private label stuff. And um, we experienced that there, are, me and my co-founding colleagues experienced that there are many, many problems which we had to solve on our way. And we couldn't believe that everybody needs to go through this hell. That's why we came up so with the idea yep. of Space Goods. So, so I want to ask you this, though, again, just for people that don't know, right? Is there is there an Amazon? What is it? Dot de. Dot co. Dot de. So there's a specific Amazon just for Germany, right? Because some of my other friends in Europe say, "Oh, I have to order from France to get it delivered to Switzerland or whatever." Like, but there is Amazon in Germany, yeah. It's the biggest Amazon marketplace in Europe. Got it. Okay. In I mean, that just this is yeah. why I do this, right? So I can learn things because yep. I'm just not that smart, right? But I, I need yeah, to learn. Yeah. I gotta go to people like you to figure this stuff out. Being yeah. smart or educated are two different things. So <laughs> Yeah, well I'm you very not... well educated. Very well educated, <laughs> just not that smart. So very different. Okay. But yeah, there is a German marketplace um, is for Amazon in Germany, and uh, it's the biggest in Europe. It's even bigger than UK. It is. So, it's just, so yeah. can, can you talk a little bit about the e-commerce market on, on the whole in Germany? In other words, you know, like in Thailand, it's super dominated by Shopee and by Lazada, right? Yeah. What mm -hmm. does it look like to you in Germany, and then what does it look like in the rest of Europe as well? Yeah, Amazon is by far number one in Germany, at least. It's by far number one. I, wow. They have, I, I wow. don't know, 40, 50% e-commerce market share. I, I don't don't confuse the numbers, but some something like that. So it's a tremendous, tremendous part uh, of the e-commerce world. Then That's you big. have sm smaller marketplaces like Kaufland and Otto that are like German marketplaces, but they don't, they uh -huh. cannot really compete with, with the Amazon uh, experience and um, there are some online shops and also the, the big um, maybe, maybe you know Media Markt and, and, and the big uh, electronics um, retail stores they have also their own online shops okay. but but marketplaces are just the strongest here or at, uh, at least uh, Amazon and that's for Germany the case and in the other countries it's totally different I know about France that we have a, f a French guy who might know it better it's like Cdiscount right it's on number one when in, in France I have no idea to be fair like which one is number one or number two I think Amazon is, is number one just because we see them much more and we, we probably can find much more <coughs> stuff on Amazon then yeah that's right that C C discount is pretty big then there would be a few others like, I, but but what I see the mostly in France happening right now and, and it's maybe because of a startup called Mi Mi Miracle who are helping doing that but what they do is that they right. take big retailers like for example uh, I, I can't get the name, but like they, take, they, take, they take a big retailer and they expand them into a marketplace. So they already have the traffic, they already have the name, they already have the e-commerce business, and then they become a marketplace and they put over people product on their marketplace. And this is this is growing right now in France, and and okay. mainly because Miracle is providing this 
backend infrastructure to easily create a marketplace. So, so that's what it's, what's, what's going on. So that's why I, I'm not sure who's, who's the first and what are the market share, but this is what's, what's happening right now into our country. <laughs> So Martin knows about uh, France. In Poland, for example, you have Allegro. Um, that's the biggest marketplace. In Netherlands, it's Bol. In the Nordics, they are pretty strong in e-commerce, but less on marketplaces, so strong online shops there. Uh, in every country, it's different, but I would say in Germany, is Amazon the strongest, and Germany is also the biggest country in biggest. Europe. Or, yeah, and, uh, and has a good purchasing power still. <laughs> We will see how, yeah, <laughs> how that goes. <laughs> so... When yeah. You said when you were in college, you first started selling on Amazon when you were at university, right? Wh why did you start doing it? Like, did you need the extra money? Were you interested in the process? Like, what was the reason for getting interested in e-commerce? Great question. I wanted to do my own thing because I was already working for Bosch and I saw that this is not for something for the rest of my life. And uh, because I saw guys which were like 60 years old and they did exactly the same what I did. Don't, make, don't get me wrong. I loved the job, but I knew this will be boring at some point. And then I got into a mindset and self-development and all that stuff. And then some YouTube video came by about Amazon and I said like, hey, if you want to start a business, let's go for this one. And then we just did it and it worked out is better it, than expected. Is there... Is there like an entrepreneurial history in your family? And, and also like is no, in Stuttgart, no. which not at all though, right? Because it's so hard to say, right? Because Martin, like in your family and in my family, and I hadn't thought about this a ton, but like, mm -hmm. you know, my grandfather had his own business. My dad had his own business. My uncle had his own business. Like your family runs their own business, right? It, it, it's weird, right? Like there's a thing that gets just built into your brain about, I think kind of like what Anton just said, like I could do this, but I'd be bored in a little bit. And I just didn't know yeah. when and... And I'd want to yep. do something on my own. Yeah. So so there is something like a story uh, as, you, as you explained it, because um, the father of my best friend, he was an entrepreneur. Unfortunately, he's not uh, under us anymore. But um, when he picked me up when I was 10 years old, uh, I, met my, I, met, I met the father the first time he came by with a Porsche and was looking like the, le the last bum you know like living on the street he was like his clothes were like he was living on the streets and i thought in this t in this time uh, rich people always wear suits and rich people uh, they, they 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 need to uh, win in lotto or whatever i don't i did not ha had any connection to that entrepreneurial stuff and that and uh, i was like okay this guy did it himself because he he was g getting from his father only depth and no no real capital and he made it from scratch and i said like hey that's that's kind of possible and ask him this uh, why he's looking like that and he said like i don't give a shit i have my own company i can wear whatever i want and i was like hey that's cool <laughs> i like it <laughs> i like it and then i knew at this point i knew when i was 10 years or 11 years old that this is possible you can make it on your own you don't need to win in the lottery you, you can make it on your own and and that's why it was always in the back of my mind that i will do something like that in the future and i guess that that is so because i'm from russia originally like um, german russian and as you know they had like communist um society and uh, there, there were no yeah you remember you might remember and there were no entrepreneurs basically in in russia because yeah it's good it was communist so we had no experience with this do you um do you write code i don't write code i i was learning it in university a bit yep. but I, d i don't write the code no we have coders which write the code Got it. Can you, because you mentioned, you said earlier, like you, you were wondering why it was necessary for people that wanted to sell on Amazon to just go through this hell together. Yeah. Can yep. you just explain like why it was so hard? Like yep. what, were some was of the, what were some of the pain points that you were, yeah, why was it so hard? Yeah. The, the biggest pain point we, we identified was the internationalization. We had to get, to, so we wanted to sell all, all over Europe. 
when the UK was part of the European Union, it was it sounded to be pretty easy, but then the bureaucracy kicked in. You need to have VAT numbers in all the different places. You need to have packaging registration. You need to have this compliance uh, document. You need to go, go for that compliance document. And when you have everything in place, then you work with Amazon, and there are more bugs than than in any other software <laughs> I've I've ever experienced. So you'll upload a picture. Uh, it, you cannot imagine the, the, the seller central. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. Uh, it's not the, 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 the best software because they have technical debt. I guess a lot of technical. Wait a debt, second. Which wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second, Anton. So you're you're saying that like Amazon, which is almost like a trillion dollar, if not, I haven't looked at the yeah. stock market cap yeah. valuation recently, but it's like a, let's just call it a trillion dollar company, which runs basically the backbone of a big part of the internet because it runs AWS and it sells that as a service to people. Yeah. And you're suggesting that just like the interface to get stuff like from your product catalog onto their site is hard. <laughs> like it doesn't work. It, well. it is hard. <laughs> it, 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 it has more failures than it works. Seriously. If you upload a picture, it does it does it does it doesn't upload and then you have to open up a ticket and then they will give you a trash uh, response and then you say no guys i'm 100 percent sure that i uploaded this picture <laughs> you know and then you always have to co communicate with them but I, I i tell i tell you something we don't have any choice than using the software and that's why they don't have a motivation to make it good that's the, that's the point if because if you look on the b2c side of things the software is slick you you have the best customer experience and whatever but we as sellers we we, we cannot get around amazon and they know that <laughs> that's why you don't need to be that good <laughs> for the b2b part than as for the b2c part and i have the same example also for facebook maybe you 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 did some um facebook ads you cannot compare the front end for the users with the front end for the at uh, uh, for the for the companies you cannot compare it because we have no choice than making advertising on facebook for example then they know that and that's why they don't need to do the software as nice as the b2 c part of the software Actually, that's my that, own experience that, that would be such a great topic michael for a podcast like why that's true like why is the back end of amazon and facebook which is huge companies we have like a lot of developers why it is so bad <laughs> why there's so many and, problems and right? Martin, I, you, you and i talked about this but like last week and actually i think what i released today for my india game changer show we had this guy on prashant malik and prashant actually built the cassandra sort of database layer this sort of like super efficient database layer for facebook so they do spend a ton of money yeah. on like this back-end infrastructure but but the connectivity infrastructure the selling ads is like look we know you got to advertise here so you're on your own basically just send us give us your credit card and we'll figure it out later yes and that's what anton's saying is the same with amazon yeah that's yeah. the first part uh, the, the the first yeah. answer to a question the second if you compare netflix with amazon for example if you compare uh, net netflix with amazon prime video okay the, yep. the, the Netflix software is like working so nicely. You 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 don't have any bugs and any nothing. But if you and I don't like the Netflix content that much. It's a bit too woke for my from my perspective. But if you take the Amazon, if uh, the the Amazon software or the Amazon Prime Video. You you watch a series and the sixth episode is in Japanese suddenly and you're like what <laughs> why, why why this and th and then I s also thought like it's Anti a trillion ways. multiple trillion dollar company <laughs> and you cannot you know and I think the quality is not the same as for companies which are Anti, specialized say, in one let thing. Let me just say, Anton, let me just say this: if the sixth episode comes up in Japanese. You won't notice. My kid, I'm telling you, it's like a sasa goku, like a Sorry, sorry, I, I didn't. Yoro kobi makuri. I I didn't get it. Sorry. I said, I said. So I speak Japanese. So I said, if the content comes up in Japanese, I get super duper happy, and I actually Yoro kobi ah, okay. means to like celebrate, <laughs> and Yoro kobi makuri means he just like keeps celebrating. Anyway, I was just joking around, yeah. showing off. Okay, no anyway. worries. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but it. But it is interesting, and I love what you said. I like Netflix. I don't love the content, but the but the software is actually really good. But you're right, though, because they it's don't good. have the same level of technical debt as Amazon, right? Because they haven't been around as long, and Amazon wasn't originally built to do what it's doing today. Exactly. Right? It wasn't another, meant another to be a marketplace. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Another example, Spotify versus Amazon Music. You have the, exactly the same issues. Spotify is just yeah, yeah. so 
it working so good and Amazon Music uh, here a bug there a bug and that's that that's how Amazon is, is scaling up their business they just do everything <laughs> what they can and of course you cannot be perfect yeah. in every field so I promised myself I wasn't going to ask you this but Space Goats <laughs> really like what is what's the point <laughs> do you like the name or you don't that's my that's I try to figure out question. here's the here's the real question for me like I try to figure out why like my, okay. the name of my company is Michael Waits Media. Like it doesn't take a lot of thought to get through it, but it's also pretty <laughs> obvious like what it does and who's running it and who's in charge. I like to make things obvious, yeah. right? It's in the name. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of people but then you, but there's another strategy for company naming and I'm I'm asking you. Right? Part of it is just like let's just give it the let's just take two words that nobody would ever put together. <laughs> and let's make that our company name because we could probably buy the URL anywhere we want and people will just wonder like Space goats. Okay, I get it. It's not going to be confused with any other company. <laughs> so, like, you're just That's trying true. to stick out. I'm thinking. I That's don't know. True. But here's my problem: is that like later when you become like a two trillion dollar company, you're just going to call yourself like SG Consolidated or something because no one's going to make space. Do you know what I mean? We we are You'll super proud. Of, we are super proud of our name. Super proud of our name, and we got almost only uh, positive feedback about it but one time yeah. only one time and there was a guy like you uh in the a investment guy like committee you. a guy like you in the investment committee of our vc so we were in the last round of our vc funding and there was like one guy from i think lidl or so because we're in, uh, we get in a, the german in, in vc invested in our company and therefore right. uh, the dax so the S&P 500 the DAX. companies or the yeah. DAX companies uh, also DAX. invest in this VC and that's why the last round is with the DAX, the DAX companies which um, invested the money as well and they need to give the go also and this guy was like I think right. from Lidl or something like that and he's like that guys really why why space goes I can uh, that's not a serious that's not a serious company uh, I, I cannot I cannot believe that you guys came that far with that name you know and he was like super <laughs> super bad on this <laughs> but the, the the boss of the committee the, he said like come on forget this guy he's always like that and blah 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 he's <laughs> always like that <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's always like you're that gonna, but you're gonna say but, like go from now on you, instead of saying he's just like that you're gonna say he's just like that guy i did a podcast with michael waits oh my god he has no <laughs> sense of humor <laughs> so but back back to a question because there is actually a story behind it uh, i will tell you the official one the un unofficial one we will go we, we can do after the recording part i i never do it <laughs> o on air but the official story is goat yeah it's not only the animal goat but the animal goat always wants to climb up so do you know the goats on the on the mountains they all they are they, which are standing there and they always want to get up but goat is also greatest of all time okay so we on our customers tom brady are for <laughs> example or cristiano ronaldo um i know i didn't want to open up this <laughs> no 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 not messy <laughs> not messy <laughs> <laughs> Not messy, not messy. So I didn't want uh, to open up this one, but uh, we call our customers goats as well, and yeah, we greatest of all time. give them the space to do so, to become a goat. Okay, and together we are the space goat. So our customers are the goats, which always want to get up, and we give them the space to do so, and that's why we are the space goats. We made it up afterwards, but but at least He's at fine. least it makes it it makes sense. If the next VC guy <laughs> <laughs> will ask this question, <laughs> <laughs> we have an ex <laughs> we have an explanation for it. Yeah, remind me to tell you when we're done recording about this um, accelerator, yeah. one of the first accelerators in Singapore that was called JFDI. We can talk about what it really was and then what they called it. But anyway, so. You had this experience where you figured just like selling for selling for sellers on Amazon in, in Germany, but also in Europe. It's just so hard, such hard yards. So like you can't create the software. You can't replace the software that uploads you photos, that does all the front end stuff for Amazon. So what does Space Go do to make it easier? We know the drill and we take away this ugly bureaucracy and administrational work on our end and uh, when we want to solve a problem it takes less time than if somebody who has no experience with the seller center wants to solve a, uh, solve a problem and that's why we 
take these problems away from our customers and then they can focus on whatever they are good in, for example, product development, marketing, whatever. And um, what Space Goods does is we sell basically other companies' products through our Amazon account all over Europe plus UK uh, since two weeks also in the USA uh, without our customers uh, need any VAT number in other countries without any um, compliance issues in other countries any yeah yeah like this I and so say. do you do you do the selling are yeah. you the entity through which they sell yeah 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 see Martin this is what we're always talking about right there you're basically dis disaggregating the seller away from the market just tell me where I'm yes. wrong here Anton right but this sounds to me like you know, every company has a product and they want to sell it somewhere. And you're saying, don't worry about the selling. Like, we'll yep. take care of that part of it for you. We already have yes. the license. We know the legal documents. We have all this stuff. We'll do all You just get the products that you love. Martin, in a way, it's almost like the flip side of other companies that we've talked to, right? That say, don't worry about the products. We'll get the products. You do the other side, yeah? Yeah, that's yeah, super, super cool. But how, how does it work on the legal side? Like, because... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a company, you're supposed to sell one thing, but yeah, you're going to sell like a lot of stuff from a lot of different companies. So I'm really curious. Yeah. So in the, from the legal perspective, we purchased the products of our customers as soon as they were shipped to the Amazon warehouse. Okay. And, and at that point, and that uh, jury, jury cated second, I think it's the it's English term for it. We purchased the products and write our customers a credit note for it it's a reverse invoice so basically basically the same but with the payment conditions as soon as we sold it that's how it works and the purchasing price will never hit the real profit what you will get if you would sell for yourself on amazon and that's why our, the miracle of our business model is that we have an additional document where we calculate how much we uh, uh, buy the products for in this purchasing um, purchasing document and what really was generated on the Amazon marketplace and the difference you will get as a credit or we will invoice this to you. So it feels like it's commission, but it's legally not commission because it's not allowed to be commission because we are selling all over Europe and otherwise you would need to do a commission every time Amazon is distributing one product to another country and blah 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 so it's practically impossible impossible and that's why we took this system for our use case and then the second uh, part of part of your question how does it work we have one big Amazon account and of course we cannot give every of uh, each of our customer access to our Amazon account that's why we build our software a software that's called Galaxy where we get all the data from our seller central and show to our customers the data which interests them. So basically their products data, their products advertising campaigns, their products um, stocks, their products uh, payouts and so on and so forth. That's the business model. But they still run the marketing, right? They still do the marketing themselves. They can or they can book an additional service where we can also we take this one. Them this one over it and they also get an access to our partner uh, company software it's called BitX. they do ppc like pay-per-click automation on yeah. amazon and they built a feature for us where we have the same system we have one big amazon account and we can uh, give to sub accounts SKUs or products and they can run their own ads uh, through this software and they can actually automate it as well so do you take the inventory risk or do your sellers take the inventory mm -hmm. risk? The sellers take the inventory risk. Our margin is and too low to take the risk. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. I'm just curious who does it, right? Because it, it opens up yep. other businesses that are potential like financing businesses and stuff like that that we talk about. Um, <clears throat> but if you've got one sort of like parent top-level Amazon account and a bunch of lower-level mm -hmm. Amazon accounts, right? And then We you, have one top-level Amazon account. One Say Amazon, again. one one top yeah. level Amazon one account level, and, yeah. it, it, and it's registered in all the different countries. It's yeah. one account. Yeah, yeah. And then you just say to your, you just say to your sellers, give us the product. We'll handle the whole Amazon thing. But do they have their yeah. own store? Like, do they manage that too? Or do they like sell on Dr. Tech or sell on Shopify or something? And then it just goes through it. Like, how does this work? Right. Because it, yeah, how, what are they doing physically? Right. Like Martin said, are they doing the marketing? But are they like logging into their own backend Amazon account that's a sub-account yep. of yours and then doing their own selling, but you handle all the sort of Amazon-facing logistics for them? 
so what what we do in our basic shows so what is always included we handle the amazon account do the amazon account management and customer support troubleshooting and the actual selling part and therefore also the invoicing of the end customer which takes away all the obligatories uh from our customers so that's the basic service so vat obligatories um epr so external product responsibility all that stuff is taken away because we write the invoice to the end customers because we are the entity which is actually selling to the end customer everything else is an optional service which the customers can book or can do themselves for example marketing they can provide their or they have to provide their own content or, or book this uh, this content at, at our company or some some other company or whoever they can do their own ads or they can book some agency or our service or Vidix to uh, run their own ads they uh, can do their own production or they can arrange their own production but if they say hey i have this product idea we can also find some supplier for you so it's a modular service the basic service is always included but the rest is, is modular and optional so what are your barriers to scale Sorry, our our own barriers. What are your ba- Yeah, what yeah? What are your own barriers to scale? In other words, if tomorrow yeah. another million sellers sold up with you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the Amazon bucks. <laughs> That's the biggest barrier. One hundred percent, the Amazon bucks and the operation behind it. Yeah, operations. Yeah, that's, a crazy answer. <laughs> that's a crazy answer. No, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, what are, what are your besides Amazon? What are your what are your operational barriers to scale? Like the number of stuff you can handle. Is is it people yep. dependent? Yeah. Or is it the, tech the, dependent? Because I'm still uh, curious what your com- tech is. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Um, compliance is one bot- bot- bottleneck, or it could become a bottleneck. We have two people uh, in, comp- in our compliance department, and every product which we sell for our customers needs to be checked once upfront. So that is compliant because com- compliance for what? Pro- product compliance. For example, do you have the right labeling? Do you have the right certifications? Do you have oh, wow. okay. the right the right languages on it? Is your listing? actually correct do you have any health claims which you are not allowed to have and stuff like that so, oh, so wow. that because we are the seller the government will always come to us first and we need to have a good answer why we are selling a product yeah. which is not compliant that's why we have to take the compliance part very serious and that's also one 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 of the bottlenecks the other bottleneck is if a customer wants to upload um, new products to our software we need to upload then to Amazon so you, you're a customer you want to sell a new product you upload it into our software and we need to take this product and upload it to Amazon and there always right. s- something goes wrong and um, I, w- I would say the, yeah that's th- insane with <laughs> the cat can tell stories here it's, it's just insane um, and I think that are our two, two bottlenecks so operations in this Amazon account and product compliance up front the rest is scalable Sorry? Do you do that only in Germany or in other countries as well? All over Europe and UK. All over Europe. So you have, you yourself have companies all over Europe. No, we have, have one company. One European entity. We have one German entity which is registered tax-wise yeah. all over Europe, and not only for taxes, also okay. for packaging registration for W E E E for textile registration yeah, for battery for all that stuff. <laughs> but it's one too many. That's okay. that's that's a good part. We we buy it one time for a high price. And then we can sell it for lower cost to all our customers because we don't need to do it for every customer um, again. And we also started selling in in the USA, but therefore we have a partner account. So w- some guy who has already a r- a op- operating Amazon account in the States, and he's using basically our software to make his own processes more scalable. And we bring him the customers which he this uh, customer products which he distributes in the states so that's the second model so tell me what the software does to automate stuff what the software does invoicing for example that's i, w- I would say that's in, in the beginning j- just just to give you an idea uh, in the beginning we did it all with spreadsheets so we have this big amazon account and you there you have like stock fees uh, so warehouse fees you have fba fees you have returns you have ppc campaigns you have all that different stuff for different companies and who will get how much money in the end of the month you know and this this was take that was this was taking in the in the in our first day so we had like 20 30 customers it was it was taking one week to do the monthly billing that we call it monthly billing one week so after one week our customers received their money now with the software we just generate 
we just click on generate invoices and they are generated for all our customers and then we click generate credit notes they are generated for all our customers then we just need to double check and so uh, and see who gets how much money and transfer the money actually and this takes one day <laughs> instead of one week for t t 10 times as many customers and that's that's i would say a, a big part of, of the thing and the other thing is that um with our software and our software can actually also write on the amazon Uh, through the API on the Amazon Marketplace. For example, prices. For example, you can um, generate your own shipment plans and you will get the labels automatically. St stuff like that. So before, before that, it was like, hey guys, I would love to know the return reasons for my product X. All right, we go to Amazon, download the report, filter the report to your SKUs, uh, then send it back to you by a ticket and now it We fetch it through the API and you see it directly everything in your software and we don't need to, to, to look everything up for you. Or PPC, for example, in the beginning it was like, send us your keywords, send us your bits, okay, and we will upload it. And then you can give us a new request when you want to add, uh, edit your campaign or whatever. And now you can directly use our software to run your own PPC campaigns without us involved so that's that's also a huge part because 50 percent of our operations or 40 percent of our operations in the past was ppc campaigns for our customers yeah but not optimization of, just um, yeah sorry i was gonna say have you heard of profit dog profit dog no not yet what is profit dog it's okay i'm just curious okay. yeah is that a german guy a french guy i can't remember i think it's a german guy swiss guy can't, german, can't yeah. remember It's the. It's not the episode we released this week. It's the episode we released the week before. You should have a look. It's a. It's a. It's a, it's a software that help you. That help you track all the cost involved into selling your product through a marketplace, for example, and then tells you like, okay, this product makes more profits. Basically, um, we because, have yeah, it. Sometimes it's it's. it's hard. Yeah, we have it in house so <laughs> we built that kind okay. of stuff <laughs> ourselves so we you built it yourself so, yeah that's what i want to yeah. know okay but, but yeah. maybe i oversimplified it maybe yeah. so maybe for sure you did <laughs> 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 for sure. i try i try to summarize it into into one sentence <laughs> for, for so, sure you did so, um, um, sell bot. okay sorry yeah, so let's let's go no, it's okay uh, What do you look like to Amazon, right? So when Amazon is out there sitting mm -hmm. on their side of the fence and they see this mm -hmm. massive account with all mm -hmm. these sub accounts, like do they know what you're doing and do they care? Yeah, they care and they love it because we take also problems away from them. We take like not every problem needs a support ticket. For example, not every problem needs a support ticket when you know the drill, when you know how to solve the problem with flat files instead of just uploading a picture like that. So we reduced our operational effort on their side. Still, uh, but while we are increasing their offer, their offers on international marketplaces. So they love They love you to sell in France, but to sell in France, you need to get the French VAT number and blah, blah, blah. And they, they, they would love to have more people selling in France, but because it's so complicated, not that many people are doing it. And we basically solve this problem. So we, we, we extend the product portfolio in the different countries. Plus, we reduce their own operations. Plus, we increase the quality of the listings and of the and of the content and of the performance of the sellers because we know what we are doing. So Amazon loves it and, and they actually know it. And I, I'm not allowed to say it, but there's one guy in Amazon. He yeah, he loves us a bit more than the others. And if somebody comes up with a problem, he says, ah, go to, go to space, go to <laughs> check, check them out. <laughs> they're, they're, doing, they're, they're, doing, they're, they're doing a good job. I won't. I won't tell anybody you said that. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> no worries. And yeah, Wait, I, I didn't say, so say Anton, any name. Yeah. I, I never heard a word. Um, but it, So here's... Like Martin and I talk about this a lot, right? I talk about curated marketplaces, right? I'm, I'm curious about a bunch of things here. Yeah. You have all this data because you own the account. You know what's selling really well. Is there a way for you to sort of abstract some of it away onto your own marketplace, right? In the sense that I know that Amazon gets the traffic, like I know how this works. But is there yeah. a way for you to start with a massive marketing business just for your sellers that are super duper good, right? Because you know who they are. Some of them are great, some of them are middling, and some of them are terrible. 
You could take yeah. the great products and then build like, you know, spacegoatsmarketplace.com or .io or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, then, I know 100% what you mean. And we already had something like uh, this as an idea. We, uh, but not as a marketplace, as a space goods online shop where we, where we have uh, the good customer products in one in one shop because we know what products are selling well and what products are not selling well we, we had this idea already but you know prioritization is a super super important thing and there are many other things which are on the roadmap already like usa getting getting more customers to usa it's on our roadmap but uh, we don't know when we will attack it mm. that, that, that's just just give me the product and i will make the I would make the website for you, and then <laughs> we we don't touch it. No perfect, problem. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, yeah. You 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 told me already why I shouldn't use Shopify, but actually we started with Shopify. Maybe we 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 will, we will uh, switch uh, to to to, to Doctor Shop. Was it you the sh name? Doctor Shop. Doctor Tech. It's Doctor Tech. Yeah. Okay. Doctor Tech. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that's super interesting, and 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 naturally we share this idea with we with with people who have like a lot of product and they know who sell and and who doesn't sell. And you you are the first one who say yeah, we already like consider that and we would like to do that, and that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's not often that people already think about it. No, most people don't. What are the, what are some yeah. of the other things in the pipeline that you haven't mentioned? What's coming? <laughs> So uh, what's what's coming? Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a good point. Um, USA, we w we want to extend it even more because we did not implement yep. all the features which we have in Europe yet to the uh, uh, Amazon account in the States. So that will that will be the next okay. big thing, and therefore we also want to bring the customer products into local retail stores in the USA and also in Europe. It's also on our roadmap to yeah. implement uh, an infrastructure for this one. Also, um, what that? integrate. Wait, wait a second, Anton. Does that mean you're about online to offline? Yes, online to offline. The big, the big leap. How, do, how would online. that work? How would that work? So we, so it's also one to many again. If we have to contact to, let's say Walmart, for example, we don't have it yet, but if, if it's it's easier than bigger you are, right? Uh, if we would have the contact for Walmart, we can pitch our customer products once per whatever months, and they can decide which products they want to pick for their offline retail. And that's 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 how we could help our customers. Beside that, uh, Amazon and offline, we also started with Shopify already in uh, Germany. So we have one customer, uh, uh, Shopify, one Shopify store for one customer, which is using the same system as uh, uh, as for the selling as a service part. What does it mean? It's also pretty. Uh, to, uh, I don't want to be that humble. So it's a pretty smart idea because we're using the same stock. We are using the same stock as uh, for FBA. What the, what does this mean? We send the we use FBAs like fulfillment by Amazon, so Amazon stores everything, does the end customer fulfillment returns and so on and so forth. And we can actually connect a Shopify store to the Amazon stock, and as soon a guy is uh, someone is buying a product on the Shopify store, Amazon will still do the fulfillment. Of course, for a higher cost, but it's called multi-channel fulfillment, and there, therefore our customer even don't need to manage two stocks. He can just send it to Amazon, and he doesn't care if it's sold on Amazon or if it's sold. Of course, he cares because he has a bigger margin on Shopify, but you know what I mean, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, s you, you said you want to expand into the United States. Is there any plan to s expand into... Asia in general or Southeast Asia in yep. particular? Yeah, so our tech works the best with Amazon or at the moment it works only with Amazon and a bit with Shopify. So for us, it's pretty easy to, int to, to connect new Amazon marketplaces to our system. So that's why we want to be at least, at least everywhere where Amazon is as well. So Japan, Got it. Uh, Ar uh, Arabian Emirates, um, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, so that so we will do it one one by one. We will integrate all over the world, uh, like Am Amazon all over the world, and then we are open for new ideas. Like uh, the uh, Jab, no, what did you say, Jabra? No, it was not Jabra. The marketplace in Thailand, Lazada, Lazada, no, yeah. and Shopee. Like this is what I'm thinking. Like you could you could just API into them as well, right? Yes, yes, but we would need to adjust more than if we connect a new ma Amazon marketplace. But still, we plan it, of course, uh, sure. uh, alone, be alone because of diversity 
uh, reasons we need to diversify uh, at, some, at some point that's what we started with shopify but still we need more to be 100 percent dependent on one horse is not uh, entrepreneurial smart but you have to start somewhere yeah you also mentioned that you raised some money from venture capitalists right yeah was that was that always the idea? And in which part of the your the building of the company did you raise the money? Was it seed stage? Was it Series A? Like pre seed. How did that work? Pre seed. It was pre seed. So when when yeah when when we started the the first Amazon FBA business, we wanted to make some money on the side and learn how entrepreneurship works and so on and so forth. When we came up with the idea for Space Goats, we said like we want to build a global company, a big thing. And at this point, we already knew that we will not do it alone because not only because of the money, also because of the connections and the experience of this VCs. So at, th at that point, we already knew what that we will raise some money. And the, the funding story was like that. In 2018, we started with my own Amazon business, which we transferred to another account. And then we checked uh, we checked how it works, the compliance with the uh, trans transfer, brand registry, whatever. And then we started to code our software. In the meanwhile, we made some meetups where we explained people how to sell on Amazon and there we get some more customers. And then we came up with this internationalization idea. So we sell, you are already a seller in, in Germany. You, you know everything. Uh, you know the drill. You know how the technique works. But you don't want to get uh, into VAT trouble in all over Europe. That's why we sell everywhere in Europe but in Germany and you keep Germany for yourself. And that was like a kickoff story for, for space codes there. We couldn't, it was so new, nobody did it, that uh, we couldn't <laughs> save ourselves from uh, customer requests. And one guy, which is also in the field of Amazon, he has like a loan service for Amazon sellers. He saw it and he said like, guys, I love it. I invest in you. With my money, we will scale that thing up and then we find a VC together. And that's how, that's how we proceed from here. So he gave us money to, to hire some new people to focus on the important stuff. And then we were actually looking for a VC for half a year or so. And in the end, the VC uh, found us and not the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that it's was for, for fortunate. <laughs> and 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 what does the customer acquisition loot on your side? You said that you been doing some meetups, but do you do something else? That like how does people find you? Um, for uh, ah, how customers uh, f find us? So we do stuff. Yeah, we, we do stuff like this, for example, a lot um, on many podcasts. We have our own show as well, where we invite uh, great people which tell what they are good in and uh, give some value to the people. We do email marketing. We do LinkedIn marketing. We don't do cold calls that much because it never worked out really. And offline events. Offline events uh, events are pretty strong for, for, our, for our purpose. For example, we have been to the White Label Expo two or three weeks ago uh yeah something like that and there were many companies which would love to sell on amazon but they they don't have the processes they or they only do offline retail and b2b and to to change it it's, it's just uh multiple year story and with us it's just easy because they are legally still b2b supplier for us and we do all the all the rest for them so that is a, a pretty promising target group right now but then it means that my merchants using dot attach, if you promise that you stop using Shopify, they might be interested into <laughs> into starts to <laughs> We can have a conversation so about this. <laughs> <laughs> not on air, well, not I'm on air. Of course about the Shopify part. <laughs> yeah, not but on the exactly. negotiation. Yeah, but but what what I mean is that most of my merchants that we have on, on Dr. Tech, and we have thousands of them, they never ask me anything about Amazon. Never, none of them. And and for for, for example, like you mentioned, the like the 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 Amazon FBA for even DTC store. Mm -hmm. Like we have the tech ready on Dr. Tech, we can implement it, but absolutely never someone asked us. Like it, it never happened. Like people just don't don't want to use it. So I'm really wondering if. They don't want to do it because they are scared of all the things that they will really need to do on Amazon. Maybe they tried to set, set, set up an account and it was not working. It was yeah. buggy. And there was like so much stuff to do. And they just did, gave up where we are starting on, on, on that stage, just like Shopify is so much easier. So maybe 
they don't do that just because they don't know you and if they, if they knew you they would start much much more e easily the thing is uh yeah M maybe that's the reason maybe the reason is because your sh sellers are not sitting in countries where amazon is strong i don't know where your t customers most are, of are my sellers are in france so ah, okay amazon. okay yeah, okay. yeah they, so are, the they are most of them they are in france and uh, and and plus i i already talked a little bit about about like in, in, international expansion with my sellers and they are interested into it like they want to sell to spain they want to sell to italy they want to sell to 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 the uk to germany but I don't, they don't know how to do it they don't know how to start like it's it sounds like a huge thing for them right? yeah and so what what i see is that like for example i can tell to my merchants hey go through space go use amazon fba so then it makes the process of selling in 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 in, in italy or spain or germany so much easier yeah yeah all of a sudden yeah for, for that's that's for sure that's what that's where we come from yeah we make internationalization easier and we make amazon easier mm -hmm. and we scale you up to yeah so yeah <laughs> Get, get them get them over <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting <laughs> you have you have, you, have, you have to promise you don't use shopify anymore <laughs> yeah yeah we, we talk about it <laughs> we talk about it afterwards so if you have an alternative i mean we are open for everything if you have an alternative why not <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm kidding of course but uh, but yeah but i'm really really wondering why people don't want to do DTC plus 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 Amazon and and why they never ask me and why when I try to in them they never really seems interested right and now that I understand better your business maybe that can be a solution that would that would just fix their problem right and, yeah and maybe now it's just an just an awareness problem because they just don't know that you exist they just don't know what you what you what you are doing so yeah I'm <laughs> As, like, would that help <laughs> as we don't have french marketing yet and french people are uh, not the best in english <laughs> maybe that's that's one of one of the that's another that's another thing and that leads me to, to mind this question like, do you have lo local team who speak italian spanish french German, yeah for 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 end, custo for end, end customer support yes uh, or, um, but not 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 for op operations yet we have someone who speaks italian we have someone uh, in german of course english is our company language so even though we are based in germany we use english to get better talent from all over the world and then we have one guy who's speaking spanish i do russian but uh, so so um yeah so that's why we have fo fo focus on germany at the most then uk and usa so what we also do is i uh, didn't mention that at all we bring americans to europe that's also some something what we do so if you're an american entity american company and you're already good on amazon usa and you want to expand to europe it's even more complicated and there's th the problem is even bigger what we solve for our customers so that's also something and the uh, american market is super big so there was no need yet to expand to france and spain and italy although we have a customer from Mon from monaco but he speaks english yeah, but why not i mean if you're an american seller you should be selling in europe right although yeah. to be fair most americans don't even know it exists so yeah, yeah. That's gonna be <laughs> europe is, is some somewhere next to africa <laughs> so Yep. it's just somewhere next to Mars, <laughs> as far as most Americans yeah, yeah. are concerned. Like, yeah, yeah. It just seems like an unattainable and inaccessible place to them, but they should be selling there. What do we have? Like three hundred and fifty million people live in the United States, and four hundred and twenty-five million people in the European Union. So, well, I don't know. Yep. Brexit. Did Brexit matter to you at all? Like, does that? Do you yeah, care? yeah, yeah. We care a lot. We get even more business with it Indeed, because right. because UK is now super complicated. Um, before that, it was part of yeah, the of it's the. Of the now of the pan-european network European and people Union. which uh yeah pan-european fulfillment network of amazon and when you did right. pan the pan-european network you were always also in the uk now it's not part of this network anymore and you have compliance barriers you have customs issues you need to export your products from europe import them to uk all that bureaucratic nonsense and people they they they, they don't want to go through this and that's why they come to us and we basically take over the products here in europe we export them in our name we import them in our name we sell them in our name to the end customer yeah. and pay you out for everything what you generate over there so it imp impacted us so impacted us a lot a lot a lot but in a good way but do you do you think and again this is more of a 
you know, I'm not there. My boots are not on the ground in Europe and haven't been for a while. But do you think there's any chance that the British kind of wake up one day and just say, can we have a do over? Do you know what I don't think so. Can we just get back in? I don't think don't. I don't think so, and I think it. W- <laughs> that's also just my personal, my personal f- feeling. I think it, there will be even more which will leave this union because right now, what's going on in the world? It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the European Union is stable right now. Yeah, because you have the disadvantages. Yeah. I, mean, I had it with my friend. You have the United States of America. Okay, it's one country, one country with one legislation, and you have the states, but still it's one in one country. And the country thinks t- uh, the people which are living there they think they are Americans, and they they go make America great again and blah. That's a, that's an advantage because everybody is fighting for the same thing. In Europe, we have the European Union, but everybody thinks <laughs> on national stuff. Like, hey, it, for example, the Ger- German uh, government they they released some kind of su- governmental support for gas the gas crisis, and then Italy said like, hey, you are much richer than us, and why you are doing it? We cannot afford it. That's unfair. <laughs> it's not allowed. And blah. <laughs> we, we will ask. Uh, yeah, really. And so th- the countries they are fighting with each other all the time different languages different cultures and we don't have the united nations of europe yet Um, and this would solve the issue but i don't believe in this right now okay maybe we should maybe we should veer away from politics and just thank you please please but please but 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 it does make a point and i'll leave you with this unless you want to cover some other stuff i'll leave you with this that is just a manifestation of the differences in the countries inside of Europe. And those things manifest themselves in the difficulties of selling on Amazon because all the separate country restrictions and stuff like that just make it harder. Yep. And every time some law changes, it makes it harder for people from outside to come in and for people from inside to navigate around, right? So yes. it's just a manifestation of stuff that's already happening in a different, um, in a different arena. And that's kind of why I ask about it. Are, it. From a political perspective, I don't care. It's none of my business. But I wonder how it impacts the business that you're running. And that's a good answer. Yeah. I think. So, yeah. Thank you. so then more complicated the things become, then better for us. It's hard to say it like yeah, that. But sure. unfortunately, that's, no, 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 that's, true, that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not our news, fault the more, that they make it more complicated. Yeah. So we, we just help the people out of this complexity. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, it should be simple for somebody in Barcelona to sell to somebody in Stuttgart, but it's not, and it's not. that's what you're trying to fix, so yeah. fair enough. Okay. One last question for you. You just, you just came in my mind right now. You mentioned your help your customer with pricing, if I'm, if yeah. I'm, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Do you do dynamic pricing as well? I was thinking the for same them? thing, man. Sorry? Do I uh, do what? <laughs> do you do dynamic pricing problem yeah we yeah there is some amazon application but as you, as you know the answer already it w- does not work that well so you can <laughs> you can give a b- <laughs> uh, barriers for your price but uh, the performance is so so okay. we we are going to implement it but we did not find a good partner for it yet is it a good thing for you or is it just like something well, let's see uh, it's a uh, everything what is a good thing for our customer is also a good thing for us because if our customers are more successful we are also more successful because we get a share of what the customers is selling and that's why we want our customers to be as successful as possible so yes it's a good thing <laughs> great answer thank you <laughs> okay anton anton herman co-founder and cmo at space goats i think i've fallen in love with this name dot io thank you so much for doing that man that was super interesting really appreciate it Thanks for the moderation. I was enjoying it. I was expecting something a bit different, but I liked it a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, I, I wish the audience <laughs> a great day. Did and you think they were prizes or like what was the difference you were expecting? Uh, I, I, I thought like uh, I, I sent some 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 stuff up front. I thought like we have something like an agenda or whatever. But I I, I like this casual conversation a lot because uh, right Much now uh, I, I, I'm big. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everybody has its own style. R- right now I'm going to many different. Uh, podcast and everybody has his own style some guys they want a one hour pre qualification and then they go through every question and then they discuss the answer already up front and blah it's a style no you will no get the different you, you, you will get a different outcome so that's what you yeah, are yeah. doing is also a different style so <laughs> yeah everybody how he likes it because we do it at the same as you guys do it we have like three to four 
questions in the beginning, but then we just keep it flowing in our own stream. Just like real life. Yes, (laughs) just like real life. Exactly. Thank you you very much, Anton. It was super, super interesting. Thanks for having me, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.